Welcome to another chores and chat video, like a hair sticking from my hand. So if you saw my first one of these, I did makeup chores. I was like cleaning my makeup brushes and decluttering a bit, reorganizing my vanity. I'll link that video below, but the reaction to that video was pretty surprising. You guys seem to really like it. So when I asked if you wanted to see another installment this month, most of you guys said yes. So this time we're not doing makeup chores. We're just doing other chores. I got other things I got to get done and we're going to chat while we do it. You guys sent some juicy topics, juicy questions. I also just have stuff I feel like chatting about while we get some things done. So on today's list, I have a grocery haul, which this video is sponsored by Thrive Market, by the way. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But the big tasks we, I need to reorganize-ish the pantry, not like a huge overhaul project, but just, you know, like sometimes no matter where you store your food, whether it's in a cabinet, a pantry, a closet, whatever, it just gets to that point where you're like, okay, I need to like take the stuff out and put it back in the right way because it's gotten a little out of control, especially if you have little hands going in there and pulling out snacks. So that is definitely gonna happen. Um, I need to get the dishes done, surprise, surprise. I also, well, I don't know if we'll get to this today. I really hope we do. I really need to clean out the fridge, but that's a big, big project. So I was trying to picture myself chatting with you guys while doing that. And I was like, I just feel like it might be too hard. We'll see, maybe we'll tackle it. Maybe we'll tackle some of it. Even if I get like a bit of it done, that would be huge. So, and then just other things I know I could get done. So I hope you enjoy this video. Maybe you're getting some chores done while we're hanging out together. Maybe you're just sitting in your bubble bath with a, a cup of tea or something. I don't know, but uh, yeah, either way, cheers. Let's get some stuff done. This is gonna be interesting, the angles that I get. I have two cameras I'm toggling between. <laughs> my vlogging one here and then like my main bigger camera that I started with um anyway all right so hopefully I can like still chat while putting laundry laundry dishes away <laughs> I'm already losing my mind hold on let's start with a juicy one okay first question do you feel pressure to regularly buy new things in any and all parts of life for content <sighs> yeah yeah I feel that pressure um, I recently got a comment the other day. We're going to start off strong and I, I'm sure I will rub someone the wrong way, but please understand I'm just a person that this has become my job and I love it, but my job and video content has morphed over the, over the years. And so when I originally started, I was talking about makeup and I still obviously do that more, more often than I'm not. But when you really break down what a makeup is, youtuber does what i'm doing is recommending or not recommending products to you and so that has always been my mentality when making videos because that's I, for 10 years that's what i've done so when i started dipping my toe in the i'm not getting anything done uh when i started dipping my toe in the water of like vlogging years back it, it naturally what i would do within my vlogs is recommend things i'm things i'm liking things i'm using outside of the makeup world because that's what I was used to doing in videos. And I honestly got to a point where I felt like my videos had no value unless I were talking about things I'm liking, genuinely. And it wasn't until, I mean, maybe two years ago that I realized like, well, maybe some of them are interested in just what my day is like and like doing chores and chatting like this. And I still struggle with that. And that's why you'll see in my vlogs, I still, <laughs> I can't do a vlog without being like, oh, and you might like this product that I'm using, or oh, this is something I'm liking, because I, I still have that part of me that feels like my videos don't have value unless I'm talking about things you might be interested in. That goes back 10 years. So please know that that's where I'm coming from. So the pressure to, so, so I guess that was in reference to, I, I got a comment the other day that bothered me, and I was like, why is this bothering me? And I realized why. The comment was, Something like, I feel like your vlogs, all they are is ways for you to recommend products. And I'm like, well, sure, but that's what all my makeup videos are. Like, you know what I mean? Where do you draw the line? But I think it bothered me because I know that's something I, I struggle with already in my mind. Like, where is the line? Like, when we're doing Vlogmas videos on Tyler's channel in December, those, we mention products here and there, but we're, we are vlogging every single day. So at a certain point, we're just telling you what's going on in our day and we're, we're sharing the day with you. And we're not as, I'm not as product focused because of we're churning out content every single day. So back to the original question of like, do I feel that I need to buy new things to keep up? Of course, of course. I mean, it's funny when I go through phases where I like, where I'm like, well, I'm just not gonna buy anything new for a long time. 
let's let's take makeup just for example because that's the strongest example i have anytime i repeat things or like mention a favorite more than once i get a flood of comments like why don't you talk about anything new and then when i'm talking about new products i get comments that are like all you're doing is trying new makeup and you never talk about products you tried in the past and i'm like i can't win <laughs> and so that's why i'm like i'm just sitting in the middle i'm gonna try new products i'll get back to you in other in speed reviews and in future vlogs but I'm still gonna buy new things, but I try not to go too overboard one way or the other. I guess that's my point, but know that that is something I'm very conscious of and that I definitely think about, because um, this is my job. I think about it all the time. Like this is not only my job, but it's my life. I share a lot of my life with you guys. So I hope that I answered the question. Yes, I definitely feel the pressure. I try to just kind of balance it so that it doesn't feel like all I'm doing is buying new stuff, but also that my stuff doesn't get, my content doesn't feel stale where I'm like not even trying new clothes or new makeup, whatever. So just out here doing my best folks. I know most of you, most of you guys truly, probably 95% of you guys totally get it, but you know, and there's always new people that aren't a part of this world or haven't, that, do you know what I mean? That don't quite understand the culture of, of what I do because I do feel like my vlogs, are different. I've kind of realized over the years that there's like two different kinds of vlogs. There's the kind where they just show you about their day and like what's going on, but they don't really talk about specific things. And then there's mine where they're almost vlogs with a splash of recommendations. And that's kind of how, always how I've done it. There's a lot of people in the beauty space that also vlog that do them the same way. Um, it's, it's just a part of it. So, all right. I'm gonna rapid fire through these really quickly because if I chat the whole time, you guys know I won't get anything done. Um, so another question I got was what camera equipment I use, just to quickly answer. So I use the Sony ZV-1 when I'm vlogging. I actually, mine broke and um, I ended up, I was gonna just like do something else and this is the best one out there for like handheld vlogging. It really is. The autofocus, the lighting, like out of the box is so good. So this is my favorite. I have the accessory where you can hold it and start start filming and it turns around really easily. I really like that for vlogging. Um, but then it also turns into like a little tripod. So I had this open on my windowsill while I was vlogging over there just a second ago. And then they finally have a microphone that goes with it that plugs in right up here. And so that's nice because originally I had one that I had to plug into the audio jack and it was a whole thing. So it's nice that Sony or no, yeah, Sony now has their own. So I can link these below if you are curious. I know that's probably only a handful of you that would even be curious. So the big camera I'm on now is the EOS Mark VI. I see, I knew I would screw this up. What is it? M6 Mark II. I'm not even sure if they sell this body anymore. And then I have a Sig Sigma 60 millimeter like prime lens on it. And that's what gives it the really, it's not even focused on me. Here I am bragging about it, there we go. Um, usually that is not an issue, but, um, oh, I was like, why was it focused? It's because my finger touched it. Anyway, it's the lens really that does it. So that is what I use. All right, dishes are done. I've got a couple drying over there, just air drying. I, I'm always glad to have the dishes done, that's, that's all. You know, it's just that daily thing that when you get behind even a little bit on dishes, you're behind a lot of it because it just quickly, literally stacks on top of each other. So I mentioned this video is kindly sponsored by Thrive Market. I've been working with them for years. We are paying customers of Thrive Market. We pay for our own membership every year. We love it and I tell, like I am annoying with how many people in my own personal life I tell about Thrive Market. So if you've never heard about it, it is an online membership-based grocery store. You can get anything from food to pet stuff to beauty and makeup, baby and kids stuff. They have it all, you guys, they really do. And their selection is crazy. So for us, I'm always looking for organic things and stuff that's maybe a little healthier, maybe like less added sugar for the kids, you know, things like that. And when I look for these things in my regular grocery store, first of all, they're expensive. Second of all, you don't have quite as big of a selection as you might like. One example I love to give is if you were eating a certain way, like if you were eating gluten-free or like my mom, or maybe you're following a keto lifestyle, paleo, I don't know, non-GMO, Whole30. The options in regular stores are very limited, but on Thrive Market, you can organize it by whatever lifestyle you're, you're eating by, if you will. So you can find so many different options. It is so cool. So 
The best part is though, you save a lot of money. I, on this order alone, saved, I think around $30. I'll pop it on the screen, which is amazing. It adds up really quickly. And so we love it. We love too that we never pay for shipping. Orders over $49 ship for free. So like I said, I say it every time, but I don't think we've ever paid for shipping. We just wait till we hit that threshold and then check out. So let me show you what we got this time. First up, we got some King Arthur bread flour. This is actually, they have an organic kind, which is pretty cool. My husband, Tyler, I know most of you guys know him. Uh, he is the baker of our family and he is a King Arthur person. And so the fact that Thrive sells it and we can save some money on it is great because he makes bread all the time and we go through flour really quickly. So that is lovely. That is specifically bread flour. And then stuff for the kids. School is starting, baby. It is back to school season. So thinking through if I'm packing a lunch for Genevieve, we're gonna try to like get her to eat the school food, but it hasn't worked so well for us in the past. Anyway, I know I've told that story before, but if we do end up packing her lunch, I got some things. So we've got the Annie's Cheddar Bunnies, little separate pouches. And then she really likes these. These are the chocolate chip dynamite, like granola bars, but they're, what is it, allergen friendly. I know the school she goes to is a nut-free facility, so we have to be really careful about that. And she really likes these and they are nut-free, so that's cool. And this brand, by the way, brand is called This Saves Lives, has a ton of allergen friendly things. So if your kid is in a school like that, or maybe you have a kid with an allergy, a good brand to look at oh we also got the again allergy friendly seed based crispy treats genevieve loves these bad boys they're actually pretty good i like them too <laughs> and then i want to try these right now honestly i'm hungry and i thought about taking a break and like eating but i was like please i'll be eating during this grocery haul these are the partake ginger snap crunchy cookies now this is a brand that i'm pretty sure yeah, made in a dedicated gluten-free, peanut-free, allergy-friendly facility. Ooh, these are a little thicker than I would have guessed. Oh, I just love ginger cookies. Like that is one of my favorite. These are really good. I just need a glass of milk with it. So we also got these Cerebelli Smart Bars. Felicity really likes these. Um, this is strawberry beet. I just like that they have like veggies and fruit in there. Um, so we got some of those. We also got, I just want to try this, the Hearts of Palm pasta. These, it's like angel hair, but it's made of Hearts of Palm. I've had like a frozen version of Hearts of Palm pasta before and I really liked it. So I figured just having this, yeah, you can even microwave it and then you just pick whatever sauce you want. So I was thinking like making just a quick lemon butter sauce with this would be a really good lunch. Yes, okay, I had to restock my favorite. So this is the Poppy brand prebiotic soda. It is my favorite by far. I think I've tried everything. I think I've officially hit the end of the line. I think I've tried it all. Not really, but like, I think I'm getting close. <laughs> These are my favorites. So the Raspberry Rose, I really like. This is Doc Pop. I think I tried this years ago. I wanna try it again. Um, so it's meant to be like Dr. Pepper. Why does this actually taste like it? So 25 calories, um, it has some sugar, so just to be aware of that, but it's just cane sugar, which honestly I think I'd prefer. It's just four grams of added sugar, but it has prebiotics for a healthy gut. It's got some apple cider vinegar in it, immunity side, sidekick, natural caffeine. So, yum, that's really good, yay. Oh, okay, this is so clutch. If you cook with ginger ever and you don't have like a little thumb of ginger to use, Having some ginger paste on hand is really nice. We just keep it in the fridge and we can just squirt some in when you need it. It's nice to have. But I was really excited to, to see that they sold it. Um, so also for the kids, these Lil Puffs, we bought another flavor and they both really liked them. This is the Sweet Potato Apple Asteroid, but they have fruits and veggies in them, which is cool. And I think they're also gluten-free. And then again, we don't eat gluten-free. I feel like I'm pointing that out. I just always have it on my mind since my mom is. Um, and then we also got some of the organic veggie sticks. They're just really delicious. All right, here's something we're gonna try. These are Zach's Mighty Organic Tortilla Chips. Just sea salt. I could eat plain tortilla chips every day. I just love them. Ooh. And I'm kind of picky. Okay, these look a little different than what I typically like. Oh, they're very corny. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're good though. I feel like this is the kind that's like a little bit stronger. So when you're scooping salsa, especially if you have like a really flavorful salsa, these would be really good with that. Mm. 
I'm just hungry. We always buy coffee. I was thinking about it while I was driving earlier today. I was like, you know, if I had a Thrive Market membership only for coffee and olive oil and flour, it'd be worth it because we save so much money just on those things that we're always repurchasing. And it's really high quality, like the olive oil we literally have right here. It is so good and we go through this so quickly and it's actually high quality. And then their organic whole bean coffee. It's hard to find a lot of selection for that. So this is their breakfast blend, but it's regenerative, <laughs> regeneratively grown, um, which I think is pretty cool. So we always buy coffee. Okay, I wanna try these too. So these are these Joyride gummy bears, zero sugar per bag. It says uncommon candy. Ooh, it smells real good. Mm. More fruit snacky than like a traditional gummy bear, a little stickier, you know? Mm. So there's allulose in them, which a lot of these kinds of candy brands, that's what they use instead of like sugar, I think. Um, they're pretty good. <laughs> they're very sticky though, so just be aware of that. So this is something I was so excited to see they sold. I had it in my cart on Amazon and if I remember right, it was cheaper on Thrive Market, but it's Molly Suds laundry powder. I've heard this is one of the best laundry detergents out there um, from an ingredient standpoint, but also just like effectiveness standpoint. So I was excited to try it. They had a few different ones. This is the unscented one. Um, yeah, I'm excited to give it a try. Let me know if you've tried these, if you have a favorite one, like I think one is like original, but like has some scent and then this is unscented, I don't know. Uh, so yeah, let me know your experience with this, but I was excited to find that on there. So. Another thing we really like is that, you know, you are ordering online and we all already order online all the time. I love that it ships from its zero waste warehouse with carbon neutral shipping. I just think that's cool that they're really trying. I Last I heard they were trying to be the world's first climate positive grocery store, which is such a cool idea. And I love supporting a company that is striving for something like that. So if you are thinking about joining Thrive Market, they offer two different membership versions basically two different membership models so the first one is month to month that is twelve dollars a month the other option is their annual membership which is what we've done for the past few years it breaks down to five dollars a month so you definitely save money and so yearly that would be 59.95 is what it costs worth it because like i said on this order alone we saved thirty dollars and if you're ordering once twice three times a month you're very quickly making back that monthly membership that you're paying that five dollars if you do the annual so Totally worth it, I love it. Um, I really think you guys will too. I hope that you check it out. If you've been thinking about it for a while, this is a really good time to do it. Right now, if you go to thrivemarket.com slash Jessica Braun, you can get 30% off your order plus a free gift worth up to $60. So I'll have the link and all of that information right at the top of the description box for you. I'll also pin it in a comment um, hopefully I remember to do that because it's really hard to get into the description box anymore so that if you're looking for the link, I can put it in a pinned comment too. It might be easier to find. Um, but yeah, thank you so much Thrive Market for continuing to support my channel. All right, we are taking a pause between our chores. Tyler and I are gonna have some lunch together um, and then we're gonna keep going because I've got the energy right now and we've just gotta keep riding this train. <laughs> All right, we're back from lunch. I know it seems that no time has passed for you. So we're gonna tackle the pantry. Let me kind of show you what we're working with. A lot of you guys have seen this before and I've said before, and I still agree with my past self, <laughs> the organization system we've kind of got going on works. It's just that every, I would say two months, we absolutely have to take the middle two sections and get things where they, back where they go. And I feel like what we've realized is there is no perfect system but you can get ones that work really well for you. And if they only need a little bit of maintenance, I would say that's a win. You know what I mean? So let me just show you. <laughs> Alrighty, so we've got our like breakfasty type stuff, rice and stuff. And then these two are the two. So we have this system here for snacks that works pretty well. This is where it becomes very, very messy. Um, some of it is because we have like some backups of things we haven't used, et cetera, but we need to go through it and see what's what. And then this lower area, we definitely need to go through too. So I'm just gonna be taking stuff out. So I think we can tackle some chatting while we do this. So um, how is Felicity doing? How is Gigi news on the workspace? It's <laughs> a lot of questions in one there. <laughs> so the workspace, we will update you soon on. And 
Felicity and Genevieve Felicity is now like truly officially walking. She just turned 16 months old. Um, maybe, what day is it? Oh, like literally, she's about to turn 16 months old. So like a week, she's been walking for a month, but she hasn't like chosen walking as the primary means of getting around until like the past day or two. She's like finally standing up in the center of the room and choosing to walk versus crawl, or she does the knee walk where she's up on her knees and just gets around really fast, but her poor knees are so calloused. Anyway, so that is kind of where we're at with her, which is exciting. She's definitely starting to get that like, this this age is, it's pretty common for the babies to be kind of, not sassy because they don't really understand that, but just kind of more defiant when they don't want something, they let you know they don't want it and not just by crying, but like, you know, by she'll throw her head back and I'm like, oh my gosh. It's ridiculous to watch and it is kind of funny. I mean, honestly, because, you know, she's usually mad because we're like, no, the whatever that food is all gone, you know? It's little things, so. But generally, she's doing really well. She's still got teeth coming in, so, you know, no two nights are the same. She'll sleep through the night really great for a while and then she'll have nights where she doesn't, you know. Just kind of par for the course. She's broken us. We're totally broken, so we're just, you learn to deal with it. Genevieve is great. She's great. Like, you know, she has moments. She's five, but she is just like the sweetest kid. And she certainly knows like how to, she definitely is at the age where she tries to push things a little bit to like, like she'll ask me something. And if I say no, she'll go ask dad. We've, we've nipped that one in the bud, but she tries things, which is very normal for this age to see what they can get away with. I remember I know I've talked about this before, but like, why do we have new, two Nutellas? I hope that one's not open. We need to like, have you ever, okay, first of all, if you want a quick delicious dessert, if you've never tried Ritz crackers with Nutella spread on top, I'm sorry and you're welcome ahead of time. That is one of the most delicious because the saltiness and the crunchiness of the cracker plus the ridiculous sweetness of Nutella, very, very good. So she's good. She's very excited that the school year is starting and she'll be going. She's still not starting kindergarten. I got that question a lot. We did decide to hold her since she had a June birthday and so she was really on the fence. Um, and I'm really glad that we did. So she's gonna do four days a week um, there at the school. It's good, everything's, I, I had a moment this morning where I was like, man, like things are hard, don't get me wrong. Like there are days that are very hard with them, but I'm so, loving the ages they're at right now. And I know it's gonna make me cry. I'm gonna hold it together. But I know that it's so fleeting. And so you do that battle in your mind where you're like, I'm trying to enjoy this and like remember this and you know, but it's impossible to, right? You still have to be like in the moment and living your life and still getting dishes done. So that's one thing, again, I always, like th this time is no exception, get questions about like mom guilt. Um, all of those things. And I feel like I talk about it all the time and I know there's a reason I get these questions all the time. Cause we all, if you are a parent, I don't even think it's just mom guilt. You do feel that guilt and it's, it's there forever. <laughs> I was talking to someone recently and I was like, yeah, that's kind of a forever thing. Like, I don't think it goes away. It certainly hasn't in the five plus years I've been a parent. I'm trying to just get everything out and then look like I already have some things that are nearly empty that I'm gonna like, I think just leave on the counter for us to finish up in the next day and then be done with. Whereas if I organize it back into there, it'll just sit there half, mostly empty forever. <laughs> if you ever feel drained during the day, what do you do to feel more productive? Well, it depends on the day. Sometimes I just take a power nap because you just need one. If you're able to, obviously if you're like at, a, at work, you might not be able to do that. But like thinking of being more productive, like I, Sometimes if you're able to just like get away from whatever you're working on or if you're like, here's my thing. I'll find myself all of a sudden just like on Instagram scrolling and I'm like, oh. <laughs> I have a moment where I'm like, what am I doing, Jessica? Stop. And I'll put my phone away, get up, leave the room, leave the phone there and like go do, start another project or go do something else or take five minutes to go sit somewhere or take a walk, whatever your work or whatever life home situation looks like but removing yourself from wherever you are right in that moment when you're feeling sluggish and you're not feeling productive, just get away for a few minutes. I feel like it, just that action can help a lot. Oh, I didn't know we had Teddy Grahams. Ooh, there's like a few puffs in this. Just use them up. 
we don't even buy puffs anymore. <laughs> Side note, we got this um, Marie Callender's Angus Beef Chili at Costco. It is so, so good. <laughs> it kind of tastes like if you mixed Wendy's chili with Steak and Shake chili, which I love those. So anyway, we have too many cans up here. We do have like a little area in our basement that we store excess condiments, cans, soup, whatever. And we haven't taken stuff down there. And I think that's part of the issue. We have like too many soups and canned veggies and stuff up here. And so we've just run out of room. So it's spilled out everywhere because we lazy, we lazy. And I have way too many bananas. I have a fear of running out of bananas because I eat one every single day because I love them. And so anytime I'm at the store, I'm like better buy bananas. <laughs> I'm usually not wrong though, but this time we might genuinely have too many. Okay, motivation to work out and eat well. I mean, I don't work out all the time and I don't eat well all the time <laughs> like anyone. I think one mental shift that's happened to me in the past few years is realizing that what, and this is what works for me, it might not work for you, but for me, I realized when I work out regularly, I don't mean every day and I don't mean the same thing, I don't mean like running a bunch of miles every time, but like even going on a longer walk or whatever, when I do that regularly, my body feels better internally, period. Everything runs smoother. I just feel better and I really feel better mentally. That's what gives me, I think my best mental health is when I am regularly doing something. And when I don't, and I kind of get in a rut and out of the habit, that's when it starts to kind of creep back. And so I don't think that that's like the be all end all solving mental stuff at all, but I definitely think it can help. So the eating well part, I think like for me, if I tell myself I'm not allowed to have something, that doesn't work. I don't think that works for most people. It might work for a few months, but it's, it's no way to live. It's just no way to live. But that's my opinion. I know I don't want to ruffle feathers because I know, and I'm not talking about people that are having to eat a certain way for a certain reason, obviously. But I guess my thing is like, my perfect example is like, if I told myself I was not going to have sweets anymore, what am I going to crave more than anything? Sweets. So if I allow myself to have them when I'm wanting them and not feel guilty about that, I think that's a healthy way of, of being right. But again, the reason I have realized I'm reaching for vegetables more often and trying to be conscious of eating more fruits vegetables and fresh things is because again, I realized that when I'm eating crappily, pardon my French, <laughs> but when I'm eating terribly, I feel terrible. I feel terrible inside, especially when you've eaten it like multiple days in a row. And like for me, like my fingers swell from all the sodium. Like it just, I generally feel sluggish and that affects everything too. And then I don't want to do anything. And it just kind of creates this cycle. So I try to be, and I feel like I've been better about like, if I notice I'm slipping down that rabbit hole of like, I've eaten maybe not so great three days in a row. Okay, then let's kick it into gear. And today let's be really conscious of making sure I'm eating fruits and veggies too and putting in, you know, alongside it. So that's my two cents on that. I think it's a balancing act. And I know sometimes I feel like that's annoying to hear like, okay, well it is though. I really do. I think the second I tell myself I'm not allowed to eat something I know I like, then I'm miserable. I feel like I can't focus on anything else. But when I just know that it's an option, whenever I genuinely feel like it, then I don't feel that like need to have it all of the time. Does that make any sense? Okay. So we've got our little containers here. It's actually three shoe containers. Um, I can link these exact ones below, um, but they have been great for snacks. So we have one that's more like geared towards Tyler and I, and one that is geared towards the kids. There's crossover too, but you know, cause for example, there are Z bars in the girl's side, but I love Z bars with coffee. So there you go. All right. So I need to kind of take everything out. This is usually what I do and just reorganize it. See if there's anything super old in here. Half the time there's something open in here that Genevieve got into, took a bite of, decided she didn't like it. Just lovingly sat it back in there. Yeah. An old baby mum mum from when Lissy was a teeny tiny baby. Um, honestly, I was trying to use these up and I was putting like a layer of like a thin layer of peanut butter on them and she would eat them just cause I'm like, I'm not throwing these away. So probably try to get her to just snack on that later. My favorite is when we're at, like we were at Aldi recently and all of us were there. Me, Lissy, Tyler, Gigi, and Genevieve's, you know, looking at snacks and we've tried to, she's at that point where she doesn't really like go into the grocery store anymore. I'm like, darn. 
So Tyler was like, you know, Genevieve, when you go to the grocery store, you want to be there with mommy or daddy because that's when you can ask for certain snacks you might want us to get and maybe, maybe you'll get them. I'm trying to like put a positive spin because it's true. I'm like, it's true. When I was a kid and I went with my parents, I'd be like, can we please get these? And usually there'd be like one thing I, I would pick out. But if you don't go with mommy and daddy, you don't have any say. Mommy and daddy just get whatever they want. Anyway, that seems to be working for right now. Okay, so continue, continuing on. All right, lighting changed. <laughs> you reference your sisters a lot, and I'm curious how you keep that relationship so strong. Um, my relate, why is that one open? Hmm. No, I never trust it if it's open. It's just not worth the gamble. Anyway, um, so I have three sisters and two brothers. My younger brother is like, like we grew up together, he's like a year and a half is our age gap. Um, and he's the one that lives, he's in the Navy. So he lives out in California. We visit them from time to time. They used to live out in Rhode Island and we visit, we would visit them out there. So anyway, um, and then my, so basically top down, it's my oldest brother and then my three older sisters, me, and then my younger brother right there. So what I was trying to say is, my relationship with each sibling is very different. And I think that's normal and healthy and it is what it is. I mean, it's a product of a lot of things. Like my sister, my sister that's right above me and my brother, I'm the closest with because we're closer in age. We have similar childhood memories. Whereas my older siblings, by the time I can, like as far back as I can remember, a lot of them were already out of the house. Like my oldest brother, was like in the Navy by the time I was like a couple years old. And so because of that age gap, I really didn't know him growing up. So it's it's been a period of like decades of getting to know him, which has been interesting, especially now in adulthood. And my relationship with him now is so wildly different than it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, etc. Which is cool. I mean, that's the nature of things. If you put in time to try to, I mean, in this way, like literally get to know him, to get to know someone and to build a relationship, you really can. But then my other sisters, I mean, we just, we're all very different. I think that's maybe the most wild thing about all of us is we all look similar, but also different. Like we literally all have a different hair color. We all, and that's just like the way it, it's kind of crazy. I'm certainly closer with some than I am others. And that's just more of like, sometimes it's a proximity thing. Um, sometimes it's an age thing. Um, you know, but I feel like that's the beauty of it. They, the relationships grow and change. And just because someone's your sibling, doesn't mean that you're going to get along with them. Just because someone's your sibling or you're related to them doesn't mean that you, that they're in your life. You know what I mean? There's so many different versions of it. There's a lot of broken sibling relationships in the world. And you might be someone that's in one where you just don't even talk to your sibling or even know wh what's going on in their life. And then there may be some of you that are like super close and you talk to your sibling every single day. Because I think sometimes people forget that just because someone's family, you can have such differing views on things and you can have such differing views on life. And, and that affects things. You know, I feel like with family, we all tend to gloss over some things. And that I think can be healthy to a certain extent when it's something that you know you're not gonna change about each other and you know you just have to move forward and you still want a relationship together, but sometimes you can't gloss over certain things, you know? Anyway, um, so I don't know that I have advice on that. Like one thing I've been trying to be better about is making an effort and like when I'll randomly think of one of my siblings, I'll text them and be like, hey, how are you doing? I wish that happened way more often. I wish I were better about it, but even just doing that little bit, I feel like is at least, it's kind of like with friendships, right? you almost have to treat it sometimes like a friendship where you do need to nurture and water it and actually talk to them and make time to spend time with them. But I feel like sibling relationships is something that like a lot of people don't talk about. Um, Cause I don't know, everyone has their own stuff they're dealing with with siblings and, and that goes with parents too and stuff. I'm gonna do these, I, I've had like bars in this but then I also had like random things like these fruit circles from Thrive Market. I'm gonna put those over with these like fruity things and raisins and then put the rest of these bars in here. Much better. This is always nice too cause you can get all the random boxes of you know, these fruit snacks, which by the way, these you can get at Costco. These are these layered fruit bars are so good. We all like them and they're made of like just fruit. I'm pretty sure that's, yeah, generally it's mostly fruit. There's like, you know, lemon juice concentrate and a couple other things, but so good. 
anyway, that was a random tangent. So like the Teddy Graham should definitely go in here. Again, these puffs, I'm just gonna like give her tonight and be done with. This is such an interesting question. Do you put your chores or your to-do list in order or how do you manage to get your stuff done? Oh, I wish I had like a perfect system. I, well, first of all, let me recommend a book to you. So I just finished this book called 4,000 Weeks. And when I initially like added it to my like want to read list, I thought it would be a book about productivity. <laughs> And it's not, and it is very specific in it saying like the person that wrote it used to be a productivity junkie, like loved all the books, etc. And his mindset has just changed so much and it is fascinating. It is one of my favorite books I've ever read and I genuinely mean that. It has changed so much about my perspective on how much stuff we get done in a day and how to feel about that and prioritizing what's important, which I know we all hear like, okay, what you know what's really important in life and getting that done is not, but also like we were talking about earlier, there are certain things that just have to get done. Like I have to eventually get the dishes done. I have to cook, I have whatever, but finding that balance and just changing your viewpoint on all of it. And I think it, it gave me a really healthy viewpoint and it also helped with some of my mental health struggles. I was kind of battling in my mind. And so if you are, having questions about all of that. I got a lot of questions about mom guilt. Like I said, I recommend that read. It's not about mom guilt, but there's just certain ways of thinking that are presented in there that I think could be helpful for a lot of people. Um, and I don't say life-changing book very lightly. And that one was a life-changing book, like more than any productivity book I've ever read. And I read a lot of those kinds of books. It is it's just really good. So wanted to throw that in here, a quick little book review, because I feel like that connects to getting stuff done. Now, obviously I still try to be productive and get stuff done. Um, I have realized if I don't, if I go head first into my day without having some sort of a plan, like what do I need to, what, what is first, right? Even just picking what am I doing first really helps me focus in on actually getting that started. The best example I can give of that is a lot of times like I'll be driving home from like dropping the girls off somewhere or whatever. And as I'm heading home to start working, I know that if I get home and I don't have a plan for what needs to be done first, like even if it's as simple as it, go and put your makeup on or go and write this email. If I know what I need to do first, I'll get started and then my day is rolling and I end up being decently productive. But if I go home and I walk in and I don't really have a plan, I'll dilly dally getting my coffee and then I'll dilly dally like petting Pinocchio and then I'll, it'll take me an, a solid 30, 45 minutes of just kind of doing nothing because I didn't really have a plan. So just pick the next right thing, right? Pick your first, that's not using that correctly, but you get what I'm saying. But this is so great. So I've got all of these in here organized. They're just in the drawer. I put the like treat ones in the back so she doesn't see them as easily. I mean, they're all treats really, but. All right, so the kids snack one is done. We've emptied some more boxes we can recycle. That is awesome. The question that was the most asked, and I don't think I've noticed this question this much before, is how did you know you were ready to be a parent? Um, my initial gut reaction to that is if you're already thinking about it and wondering like, am I ready? You're probably are. <laughs> Cause there will not be a magic point where you're like, oh, today I woke up and I am ready. Like there's not gonna be something that happens that just, it's just not how it works. It's not how anything, in life. it's kind of like if you're trying to decide if you wanna make a career move, usually there's not some big moment that like proves to you 100% that you're ready to switch careers. Like. It's just not how life works. So you really do have to kind of throw caution to the wind at a certain point. But that, I'm only talking to you if you know you eventually want kids. Because if you're someone that you're not even sure you want kids at all, then you might not be ready. I mean, that's a big decision. It, not one you, I don't think you should take lightly. Look, look at us. We got imminent, oh, that's open. I don't know why we have all of these. I remember buying some at, when we were out somewhere, maybe that's the one that was open. Did I buy more than one? Well, either way. Yum, we've got M&Ms. My, my gut reaction is if it's something you've talked to your partner about before and you, you're you open to the idea and you're, you're continually thinking about it, am I ready? You might be, you, or at least you might be right in that window. Because if you're not even thinking about it, then do you know what I'm saying? I feel like if it's already on your mind a lot, you're already, you've already taken that next step. Um, but it is a big decision. The thing I've talked about a lot that really um, affected me more than I think I realized it would was it's just such a life flipper upside downer. 
And I don't mean like obvi the obvious things are hard, like a baby crying in the middle of the night. That stuff you get through, like you, you do. It's hard, but you get through it because you have to. And it, I wouldn't be scared of that. I think the thing that was the hardest for me was that my life really was different. And I don't mean like my heart changed when I had, I mean from a very <laughs> logistical standpoint, we suddenly couldn't be like, yeah, we'll go to trivia on Tuesday night with you. Now we still can go to trivia on Tuesday night with our friends, but we have to make sure we set things up. So it just takes that extra bit of planning and all of those kinds of things. And that's in addition to everything else that comes with having a baby. So it's like I say repeatedly, it's not a light decision. It's not a decision to be taken lightly, but it is one that if you know you eventually want kids and you can't stop thinking about it, you're probably ready. Um, I don't know. It's such a, I mean, obviously that's a question I can't answer for you. And I know anyone that asks it, you know, I can't answer it, but if you're just dying for that, like answer, you're not going to find it. You're not. So, you know, kind of a leap of faith kind of thing. We have so many bars. You guys do not let me buy any more bars. I have every brand you could imagine. This is unbelievable. It is unbelievable. <laughs> At least they're gathered now. They were in like different ones. And of course I've got my chomps meat sticks drawer that we've had for a few years in there. We just keep it stocked. We love those bad boys. Some of these, like these Triscuits, we've had a while. It's like two thirds gone, but you know when it gets to a point where the last one you had, you're like, I feel like it was kind of stale. Mm, nah, it's borderline. Those are good though. All right, we, this is so much better. Everything's back and it's like proper home. I have a couple of things of like extra stuff. I pulled that out and swept, which is really nice. So I'm feeling good. It's a lot more manageable. Yay. <laughs> so another thing I'm gonna try to get done now that the pantry's done. There, there's no way, like looking at the time, I'm like, we gotta go get the kids in like an hour. No way we're tackling the fridge. So that'll be for future at some point. <laughs> Um, but I do need to make Pinocchio's dog food. So we buy him like regular dry dog food from, uh, well, we buy it on Chewy.com or like the Chewy app, but what is the kind we get? It's, um, Hill Science Diet and it's like their perfect weight one because beagles can tend to be overweight. Um, but what we do when I actually have the time, so he's just been eating it as is for the past week. But what I try to do is make him some homemade dog food in a slow cooker because it's really easy. It's not a lot of work. If it were a lot of work, I mean, I love my sweet Pinocchio, but I mean, <laughs> I already have a lot going on. Um, but it's not a lot of work and he loves it. And so basically when I do have it made, it'll last like three weeks or so. And we'll just do half and half. So like half of the dry food and half of this. He loves it. It's like a vet approved for not formula, but like recipe. So I'll link the recipe below. I found it years ago and we've kind of stuck with it. Um, but yeah, let's make it. So this is a slow cooker where you can actually like cook the meat in it, which is the dream. Like I have been, this is like my dream crock pot. Uh, so we're gonna cook like sear the meat in there and then you add the rest of the stuff in I had this like weird green stuff That I got on my pants. I had it like on my hand. I'm like what in the world? So I wipe it off. I'm like that's weird and then I like look down because I got more on my hand and it's from my Shorts and I don't know what it is. It's so weird. I got I think most of it off but dealing with green stuff over here <laughs> Why do you always say I feel like when you really mean I think? I Don't know. I've never it's just how I what I say <laughs> I've never thought about the differentiation between it. I feel like, or I think. I mean, I guess in my mind, they're like, you could say either one. Boy, nothing will let you know what your bad habits are than being on the internet. <laughs> you wanna know what your uh, idiosyncrasies are? Someone will tell you, <laughs> repeatedly. Mustard and cottage cheese. Okay, so the hype around cottage cheese suddenly on TikTok is the funniest thing I've ever heard. And I heard Taylor talking about it in a recent video too. And I'm like, yes. Why all of a sudden are people acting like cottage cheese is new? I eat that stuff every day. <laughs> but hey, I'm happy for cottage cheese. It's having the moment it deserves, all right? But yeah, the, the cottage cheese mustard mixture thing that you can make, no thank you. I love cottage cheese with like boiled eggs mixed together. Um, 
but beyond that, like I'm nah. Now I do love ricotta cheese and like putting ricotta cheese on toast. I've gotten into lately. So that's something that I absolutely love. Mm. Oh, I do have an update. I started voice lessons for real. I had my first one. Um, I should have my second one soon. Does the smell of ground meat ever make you feel sick sometimes? Ugh. I don't know why, like every once in a while it'll just get me. Yeah, the original person I reached out to finally got back to me. I guess my email had gotten lost in, you know, where emails get lost. <laughs> and uh, so we had our first one the other day and I was so nervous. Y'all, I cried within the first 30 seconds. <laughs> She recorded the whole session and then like sent me the recording so I could like listen to it if I wanted to re rehear something, whatever. And listening to the first 30 seconds and hearing myself start to cry is the funniest thing in the world because I mean, it's not that funny, but you know, just giving myself some grace. I was so nervous. I'm so proud of myself. It was so great. We actually didn't sing a ton in this first one. She just taught me a lot of like voice therapy things I can try. Um, and so the next time I go, I'm supposed to bring like a song with me that we can work on but yeah it was really good and she just talked a lot about the science of our vocal cords and I learned a lot of stuff like even as someone that went to school for musical theater and like I had voice lessons weekly for years and it was really cool to learn new things um, and really I'm just kind of treating this as like starting over like obviously I've learned a lot and I have a lot in my mind but my voice itself is a little bit different than it was and so I'm trying to treat this as a huge learning experience and just trying to start from scratch. So that has been nice. But yeah, so that's great. I should have my second one soon. I actually need to schedule it with her. That's something I need to do before I leave today, actually. But all is good. I'm so proud of myself for doing something I kept saying I wanted to do, and I finally did it. So we're going to keep that train rolling for a while. How come we don't see your kiddos in the vids? Um, I mean, I show bits, but I don't show a lot. I feel like I've talked a lot about that, but I understand obviously some of you guys are newer um, just because there's there's too many weirdos on the internet, you guys. We do, like when we originally started having, like when we had Genevieve, we showed her all the time. And finally we kind of got to a point where we're like, you know what, I want her to have a say in, in something like that. And so we stopped, we privatized some videos, um, but generally like, in our Disney ones, we don't show them a ton, but we will a little bit. Like, we'll kind of flash to them and maybe they'll say a word or two and then we move on. We try not to show a ton of it, unless it's just a moment where we're like, oh my gosh, like you guys have to see this. But we're just, I guess that's the point. We're very choosy about how often we show them in videos, how we show them, um, etc. So that's really that. It's funny, I got a comment the other day that said, it was being mean, but it was like something like, yeah, well, you, you exploit your kids for views and money. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I've never shown my kids. Well, the bits I do. So it was just odd. I was like, I think you're new to my channel or you're just putting that on a lot of videos. A lot of trolls will just like copy and paste something on any kind of vlog channel. And it's usually something like that. And, you know, 50% of the time they hit the mark. But it was just odd. I was like, what? <laughs> all right, so the meat is almost done. And basically all we do is I add the, like on the recipe, the amount of water, rice, some frozen veggies, beans. That's it, you let it cook for a few hours and then I just put it in. You can freeze it, you can put it in the fridge. Obviously it'll last a little longer in the freezer. Um, but yeah, it's, it's great. I'll usually like use these quart containers. I'll, sh well, I was gonna say, I'm trying to think of where they are. Um, I'll usually use those and uh, you can freeze them in there, but if you're gonna freeze them in there, when you know you have like a day or two left in the one you've got in the fridge, I'll get it out of there because it'll probably take like a day or two to totally defrost um, in the fridge. So just be aware of that, just a little bit of planning. But yeah, the nice thing is ever since we started doing this, he, Pinocchio, like he had tended to be like five to seven pounds overweight for a dog, which can be a lot of weight on their hips and stuff. Um, and beagles are very food driven dogs and Pinocchio is very food driven. But by doing this half and half, I mean, we've been doing this for years and he is at a perfect weight every time. He seems to have plenty of energy. I mean, he also sleeps plenty because he's just a stinky cute little dog, but you know what I mean? So it's, it's been a really good thing that really, when I first started doing this, I was like, okay, Jess, like, are you really going to be that person? But I'm like, you know what? It doesn't take that long. It makes him so happy. And it's, I think keeping him healthier too. So we need to turn this down too slow. All right, very serious topic of discussion. 
for you, when it is back to school season, is it instantly fall in your mind? Tell me I'm not alone. Like the second back to school season rolls around, I'm like, I guess it's fall. We still have two more months of summer. Two more months. Like it's so crazy how that can like train like over 30 plus years of being live that has trained my brain into like, well, once school starts, I mean, we're basically in fall, but it's like, no, it's like 90 something degrees outside Fahrenheit. Like it's, it is full on summer. And it's so funny. I was working on a um, short form, like a TikTok on some SPFs. And I was like, no one's going to watch it. It's fall. I'm like, well, it's not. But I'm like, but in most of our minds, like it's already starting. Like the wheels are turning towards fall. Um, anyway, okay. One and a half cooks, cups of rice. Might be like just enough. Yep. Almost always is. I actually didn't have as much meat as it says because one of the pounds of meat I bought had spoiled. I should have checked the date. The date was all like when I bought it, they, it was from Aldi. One of them was totally fine. And the other one had a later date or a, you know what I mean? Earlier date and it was not. So maybe that's why it was already making me feel weird. Cause I knew one of them as well. This one definitely is fine, but you know, once it's in your mind, it's hard to like, ugh. so then all we need is some frozen veggies and some kidney beans. I actually will buy like the frozen bags of peas, frozen thing of carrots, frozen thing of green beans and then split them in half. So then I get two separate slow cookers out of it. You know what I mean? Cause that's, I mean, it only calls for a cup of each. So that's actually still even more. So yeah, I'm totally like, I'm enjoying the warmer weather. It feels like it's still hot here, but the humidity has dropped a lot, which has been so refreshing. Cause there were a few weeks there where I'm like, dude, it's so unbearable outside. Like it's just not enjoyable to be outside. So that has been really lovely. Makes just like even going on a walk with the kids so much more enjoyable when you're not just totally sweating. But it is hard because you go to the stores and there's all kinds of fall and Halloween stuff out and it's my favorite season. So I am excited, but I'm definitely like holding off a bit. I did do a, well, it's kind of fall. I called it a fall clothing haul like within a previous vlog, just cause a lot of the clothing was like geared towards fall. So like, I'm dipping my toe, but I'm not, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> we were at Costco the other day and uh, they had like Halloween stuff up everywhere. All right, so that's it. So I'm gonna put the lid on it. It says cook on high for four or low for six. I might just do high for four, considering the time it's already like after three. By the way, the brand of this, if you're curious, cause I know I will get, <laughs> speaking of like what we were talking about earlier, linking things, but I know I'm gonna get questions. It was, this was a all clad. And we bought it a couple years ago. I think it was like a, was it a Black Friday sale or am I thinking of another thing we bought? Either way, it is amazing. It's the one that can do a lot of different things. It's a slow cooker, but it also can do rice, steam, sear, and simmer. We pretty much just go between the slow cooker and the searing where I like actually cook like the meat beforehand, which is great because otherwise I would have cooked the meat in a pan dumped it in here with the rest of it so then I'd have two things to clean. It's so cool that I can just cook it within the same. But because of that convenience, there's definitely like a price hike in it. So just be aware. Alexa, add rice for Pinocchio to grocery list. I put rice for Pinocchio on grocery list. Good to add that to anyone else's list. <laughs> All right, I think I'm gonna wrap this video up here cause I do, I do need to like send an email or two and go get the girls. But I hope that you enjoyed this latest installment in uh, our chores and chats. I know this lighting is so weird. Hold on. There we go. I feel like we never really left my kitchen today because we really didn't. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you did watch all the way to the end, let's see, comment with the, let's do a seashell emoji because it is still summer folks, okay? So let's comment below with the seashell emoji, maybe three of them if you are still watching at this point. Thank you so much if you are. Um, and yeah, let me know if you want to see another installment in our chores and chat next month or maybe in two months. Um, I'm just going to have to clean the fridge on my own, I guess. <laughs> Honestly, that would have been really hard to do while also chatting. The other ones were hard enough, so I'm not going to put myself through that. I think it would be way too hard, but I love you guys. Oh, thank you again to Thrive Market, of course, for sponsoring a part of this video and continuing to support me and my channel here. I uh, love it so much, as I've said repeatedly. If you do want to check out Thrive Market, you can go to thrivemarket.com slash Jessica Braun. That will get you 30% off your first order and a free gift worth up to $60, which is awesome. So I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.